All right, so um, what we're wanting to do on this question, it says scientists want to estimate the mean weight of mice after they have been fed a special diet. From previous studies, it is known that the weight is normally distributed with a standard deviation of three grams. How many mice must be weighed so that a 99% confidence interval will have a maximum error of 0 0.5 grams? Okay, so um, let's, let's stop for a second with the numbers and you know all that. We're gonna get to that. But I wanna make sure this is real. I mean, you know, you guys are taking this statistics class and it's part of your college thing. I know you're like, I wanna get on with my life, get my, get my degree, get the job I want. I know, I know, you know, I was a college student too. I know how you feel. This is probably just a GE that you gotta check the box and move down the road. But it, it would be good, you know, statistics is part of real life for everybody. And so I'd like to give you something that's a little bit real here, make this a little more real if I can. So it does some real good to your life besides just getting the degree, the grade and checking the box and moving on. So what, what are we even talking about here? What, what is going on? This is real life. People do things like this, not just science people. I mean, this one is scientists, but we, we all read studies about what scientists have done. And, and we all have the ability to weigh statistical information. And so if we're trained to do it, so that's what we're doing here. So what are they doing? Well, basically they want to, they want to figure out some kind of thing about the mice, um, about whatever it is, the average weight of mean, mean is average, right? So whenever they say mean, that's average. So they're, they're wanting to figure out some average weight of a bunch of mice after they've been fed some special diet. So they're giving them something and want to know their weight, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And so they want to figure out a 99% confidence interval. Hold right there. I wonder if you really understand what it means when it says that. Does that have any real life meaning to you? What is a 99% confidence interval? Well, for example, it would mean um, we want to be 99% confident. I'll just make up some numbers, but it'll give you the feel, I think. 99% confident that the, that, the, that the mice weigh between 10, I'll just say between, between, I don't know, 10 and, 14 grams. I'm just making up numbers here. For example, you know, um, after, after they eat the special diet thing. Or, or we'd like to be 99% confident. Oh, oh, let me just say, and the way we put that is we put 10, well, don't worry about that, never mind. Or we'd like to be 90, yeah, I don't need to do no example. Sorry, I'm being a little haphazard here. So basically, that, that would be a confidence interval. Why is it called an interval? Because it's a range of numbers, an interval from 10 to 14. Now, now you might say, well, why do we have two numbers? Why do we have a range? Well, because we don't know exactly what the mice, what the average weight of mice is after they've had the special diet. What do I mean we don't know exactly? Well, we're, we're trying to predict the actual effect of this diet on the mice, meaning for the, for the rest of forever. Right For the next 100 years, every time all mice are given this special diet thing, what's going to be their weight? What's going to be their average weight afterwards? If we, could, if we could run into the future 100 years and take every mice that's ever given this special diet, what will be the average weight of all those mice? You know, what's it going to be? Well, we're 99% sure that it's going to be somewhere between 10 and 14. So, so let me be clear about that. We're 99% confident that the true average of all mice forever, <laughs> uh, and the way we say that in statistics is we say the population as opposed to the sample. I wonder if those words are landing on you with enough meaning as you read all these statistics problems all the time. Population means everybody. Sample means small group, right? So, that, so we're, we're not interested in what just happens with the small group. We want to use the small group to tell us something about what the truth is of all mice forever. In other words, what this diet really does. So, and, and this is exactly what we care about in the real world, right? For example, when they, um, when they do polling on an election, if it was an election year, it'd make more sense. But so when, when we're coming up on an election and they want to know, you know, like, how's the, how's the nation going to vote? you know, for this candidate or that candidate? What percentage are going to vote for this candidate? What do they do? 
They do samples. They ask 100 people, 1,000 people, 500 people, who are you going to vote for a couple months before the election, right? And then they say, well, you know, 40, 49% are going to vote for candidate A. Okay. Well, they don't know for sure it's 49%. Have you ever seen the way the, the polling results go? They'll say it's 49%. And then they'll say, if you notice closely, they'll say there's an air margin of you know, 5%. That means it really could be 5% higher than that. That'd be what, 54%. Or it could be 5% lower than that, which would be, what's that, 44? So they're really saying it's gonna be somewhere between 44 and 54. What they're saying is we did our survey of 500 people or whatever, and 49% of the people we surveyed said they're going to vote for that candidate. But we realize our survey may or may not accurately represent the whole, what, population. That's because that's what you care about, is what's going to happen on actual election day with the whole nation. That's what matters, right? And so that, and then you see they would have a confidence interval. They'd say somewhere between 44 and 54 percent of the population is going to vote for, we, we believe, on actual election day, what's going to really happen is somewhere between 44 and 54 percent. We're 99 percent sure, 95 percent sure, whatever. You know, they would do a confidence interval with a certain percent of confidence on what they think is going to happen in the real election day to the, for the whole, when the whole population of the United States goes out and votes, at least for those who vote, right? So that's what statistics is all about. I wonder if if, if that's really clear for you, that's what we're doing all the time. Let me, let me do one more example to make sure this is very, very real for you. What if doctors, something more important than, than mice or election, what if doctors have a new treatment for skin cancer, okay? What if they have a new treatment for skin cancer? How do they know it's really great before they start giving it to everybody? Well, they try it out, don't they? They try it out on 10 people, say 20 people, I don't know. What, what if they try it out on 10 people and it, you know, it does better than the old treatment? You know, maybe 80% um, of the people uh, never develop serious cancer, 80% cure rate. You know, in the old treatment, only 70% of the people got better. So this, is, this seems better, right? This seems better. Let's switch from the old treatment to the new one and let's give it to thousands and millions of people who come in with initial, initial signs of skin cancer for the next decade. Well, well, we better be careful, huh? We better be careful, why? What, what, what could go wrong in testing out a new treatment for skin cancer, giving it to 10 people, seeing that 80% of them, eight out of 10, got better, which is better than the old treatment, which we've been doing for years and years, which only has a 70% cure rate. So, hey, it's gotta be better. That's statistical evidence. Here we go, everybody gets the new treatment. Well, not quite so fast, right? What, what's the problem there? You don't need to talk to me about fancy statistics lingo, just real life. If you read that study, said, hey, they, they got a new treatment. They gave it to 10 people, eight out of 10 got better. The, old, the old's only 70, we're going with the new. What, what, what? Not enough people. Yeah, exactly, Roxanne, thank you. Not enough people, right? What? That's only 10 people. And what, and what we mean when we say that, you're, you're exactly right on. What we mean when we say that is, well, you know what? That could have been a lucky sample, right? Isn't that what we really mean? Those, those could have, you know, it's only 10 people. Those, those people might have just by random luck been a little more healthy than, than, than your normal group of 10 people that, that have initial case of skin cancer. And they were going to get better anyway, kind of on their own. And, um, and, and really, maybe the new treatment's actually worse but those eight out of 10 got better just because they were a healthier group. It's only 10 people, right? And so that's the problem, isn't it? That's the problem. And that's why we need statistics to be careful. And, and really, like you said, more people. You gotta do 100 people, 1,000 people. Now, what happens is you do more and more and more people. If it continues to have an 80% cure rate, your confidence grows. Confidence interval, you tracking with me? Your confidence grows. You become more and more sure that the new treatment really is better because the chance that a thousand people were all just lucky, healthy people is very, very low. No, no, it's much more reasonable to believe. There's much more strong evidence and good reason and confidence to believe that the new treatment really is better and let's go ahead and start giving it to everybody. So that's the idea in what we do in statistics. 
we're trying to figure out if something is so, and we form what's called confidence intervals. Now, um, as we talked about, the number of people in your sample going from 10 to 100 to 1,000 is very important, right? The more you do, the more people you examine, the greater your confidence is. Well, then that begs the question. It's begging. Here comes the question that's being begged for. Well, then how do you know how many people to do? How many people should you put in your interval to, to, to do your study? And that's, that's exactly what we're looking at in this question today. So let me erase all. There's the intro. It was a long intro. I hope that sets it in reality in your mind. We're just doing these silly little mice, but it, it's used for much more serious things as well. So um, in life, it's everywhere, right? Government, health, psychology, sociology, law, everybody uses statistics. So, all right. So the question is, how many mice? That's like, how many people do we have to give the new skin cancer treatment to in order to get the confidence we want with no more air than 0.5 grams? So they want to do this little study on these mice, and they want to become 99% sure about what those mice really weigh after the diet. Maybe this is some special thing that are going to transfer over to human beings. Who knows? Whatever. So how do you know how many do you got to have 10 mice, 100 mice, 1000 mice? How many mice do you got to have? Well, there's a formula. All right. So let's go. Let's go grab our little formula. Let me switch screens here and I'll grab it. I will grab it right here for you. There it is. Determining. In fact, it's probably already there for you, right? Determining sample size. Um, no, I don't like the way they do that. All right. I'm going to go back and get this one again. Yeah, this one right here. Determining sample size. All right, I'll bring it over for you. Oops, let's go to the wrong place. No, it's the right place. All right, determining sample size. Sorry, my iPad is just looking at me saying, what, do you want me to do something? I do, iPad, I do, I want you to move. It, Hold on one second. There we go. It just gets frozen. All right. So yeah. So let me let me put the formula up here for you. And there it is. All right. So here it is. Here is the form. Determining sample size. How do you how do you know how many people you need to include, or how many mice in this case in the sample? Well, there's the little formula right there. The sample size required to get the confidence level you want with maximum error E is that. So I'll write that next to the problem. N equals Z sigma over E squared. So let me write that for us. N equals Z sigma over E quantity squared. I got that right, didn't I? Z sigma over E squared. Yeah, there we go. So there's the formula for N. N stands for sample size okay so let's do it now what's um let's let's find the different parts what's this z thing well this is the z for your confidence interval in this case 99 percent confidence interval okay so do you know how to get get your numbers for that i'm going to go i'm going to go to the chart now and get get the numbers so let's raise it right there. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Here, I'm gonna go take pictures of it. Um, I'd rather do that. So just a second, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna get that chart, the Z chart, and get the confidence of ones. You probably have already got them. Great. I'm getting them. One second. Um there it is. All right. And uh, yeah, they're right down at the bottom. Okay. There they are. Beautiful. There they are. And I want to show you that I also found them another place. Come on, my bad. There we go. All right. And then they're also here. Yeah. 
and the bottom. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, well, actually, let me take a picture of the top up there. Okay, so let's bring those over. No, that's not the right one. Okay. So this is the Z chart. Okay. So this is the Z chart, right? You guys have this Z chart? And right down here, do you guys, is this where you usually get them? This is the easiest place, I think. Common critical values. We're doing on ours a 99%, right? So right there, there's your Z value. This is, these are your Zs over here that go with these confidence levels. You probably already know this. I'm probably telling you stuff you've known for a long time. Two point, that's at the bottom of the Z chart. 2.575, for us, it's 2.575. See it right there? You could get it out of the middle of the chart as well. Um, it's it's because it's right here. Um, but anyway, uh, let's just, it's convenient right there at the bottom for us. 2.575, let's go. All right, so 2.575. For a 99%. Okay, and now what's the sigma? A little squiggle, that's a Greek S called sigma. And um, it's that is the standard deviation. You know that, right? Three. Standard deviation. And the E is the air. And it says the air is 0.5 grams. In other words, they, they want to be sure of the average weight of the mice after the diet within 0.5 grams of air, right? That's the air margin they're willing to have. They want that. All right, here we go. Let's plug them in. You plug in the Z, 2.575 um, times, well, here, I'll write out the calculator stuff in a minute. Um, multiplied by the uh, sigma, which is three, divided by the 0 0.5, and you square the whole thing. All right, so do you know how to type that in the calculator? I'll write out the calculator steps. So here's what you actually type in on your calculator. You would type in on your TI, 83 to 4, you'd go 2.575. Time, don't, don't worry, notice, notice I did not put the first prints in. You don't need to. I'm going to show you the easiest way here. Times three divided by 0 0.5. And then just hit enter. If you hit enter, then it calculates the whole thing. And then you can just hit the X squared button at the end and it squares the whole thing. It takes care of the parentheses for you automatically. Whenever you hit enter, it, it does the whole thing. So it does the whole inside and then hit X squared at the end. Excuse me. Have it. Yeah. I'm sorry, um, I came in a little late. And um, anyway, the 0.5, is that the maximum error of 0.5 grams? Is that what the E equals? Yeah, right. Maximum error, 0 0.5. That's right. Okay, just checking. You got it. All right, so they hit the buttons. Try it on your calculator. Um, times three divided by 0 0.5. Enter, X squared, enter. Um, wow, I got a big number. Is that right? Times three divided by 0 0.5. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, no, I made a mistake. Let me try again. All right, be careful. Don't do what I did. All right, check in here. All right, there we go. Yeah, that's more reasonable. So, so here's what I got. I got this answer. I got 238.7. All right, now um, notice one, one more thing I want you to notice here. See the blue? Round up to the next whole number if it's not a whole number. Does everybody see that? So when you determine sample size, you need to round up. And so I'm gonna round up to 239 mice. And so that's the answer. If you want to get the kind of accuracy they want to get on this study, you're going to have to include 239 mice in your sample, right? The more you include, the stronger your confidence that you're really getting to the truth of whatever's going on, the cancer treatment, the 
election results, or in this case, the, you know, the weight of the mice after they have the special diet. Going to need to, to include 239 mice in your survey. Now, careful, I, I said something that might not be clear to you. You, you. I'm afraid that you might be looking at that 0.7 and going, I know, Mr. Heron, I know, 0.7 rounds up. I know that. I got it. No, 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 no. I mean, any number rounds up, any number rounds up. In other words, even if it had come out to 238.1, I would still round it up to 239. I want you to understand what we mean, what Miss Lee means when she gives you these notes and says round up to the next whole number. That's different than round off. Round off is the kind of rounding you're used to. 0.5 goes up, 0.4 goes down. That's called rounding off or rounding to the closest. That's not what we're doing here. We're rounding up. When we, when we say up, we mean up. Even 0.01's going up. Now, why? Well, I think you know, right? More mice is always better. It sounds like a funny thing to say. But I mean, more in your sample always produces more accuracy, doesn't it? So in other words, if 238.1 mice were what was needed to get the accuracy we need, you can't, you can't have part of a mice, part of a mouse, part of a mouse. So you're either going to have 238 mice, which is less than you need for the accuracy you want, or 239 mice, which is more than you need. So then you'll get your accuracy you wanted and even a little bit better. So you'll always round up whenever you're talking about sample size. There's going to be more. Uh, later today or next week, more sample size stuff with a different couple other formulas. And remember, uh, you heard it here first. You always round up for sample size problems because more in the sample is always better. Questions? How can I help with that one? Are you guys able to crank that out in the calculator? Anything I can say to help? Glad to help with the calculator or answer anything. Uh, yeah, I can show the calculator. Yeah. Let me see, let me go to my screen. Okay. Pop up my emulator thing. There it is. Okay, here's my calculator. I'll put my little... Um, Marlon, no, where is it now? Where is it? Oh, there it is up there. View the uh, press history right over here. Okay. All right. So here we go. What do you do? So what I was saying is you go 2.575 times three uh, divided by 0 0.5 and then hit enter. Watch, I'm going to hit enter. Boom. You got that answer. And then I'm going to hit the X squared. The X squared button is over on the left, you know, right above the log. It's at X squared. It, it, and see what it does? It automatically grabs the last answer, the entire answer, and squares it, and then just hit enter. And there it is. 238.7, blah, 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 rounds up to 239. Just like that questions I can answer on this example. Going back to the iPad here. So yeah, I should have said there's one more enter at the very end. So this is the now the exact sequence of buttons to hit. Literally, if you hit exactly those buttons in that order, you will get the answer. Now, again, in case you're like, Mr. You never did the parentheses, you could do them. If it bugs you, go ahead and put a parenthesis here and a parenthesis there, and it won't hurt a thing. But I'm, I like to avoid parentheses if I can. And so, how, and how I can avoid it is I can get it to get, because what does this square mean? It means square this whole thing, right? Well, I just put the whole thing, the in, I just put the whole inside in and hit enter. Once you hit enter, it calculates that whole thing. And so when you hit X squared, it's squaring the whole thing which is the whole purpose of these parentheses. That's their whole purpose in life. So I took care of it, so I don't need them anymore. So either way though, if it bugs you, put the parentheses in, they won't hurt, it certainly won't hurt. And so there's our answer.